So I've spent uh, uh, better part of a half hour making a nice little throne. It's not really a throne in this sense. I just found stones that were already actually right at river level and futtered around until I found a really good backbone, back, back stuff. And it just kind of moves a little bit side to side so I can actually swivel a little bit, which is actually pretty cool. It can swivel about, you know, seven or eight degrees either side. So it's like, it's kind of like, oh, I have to look over here and, oh, I have to swivel over here for a second. There's a level of flexibility to dealing with sheer stone that is really kind of unheard of in the realms of stone. <laughs> Therefore, I'm either stoned, or I'm a master craftsman, or both, or neither, or only one, and not the one you think. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on who you are, and how stoned you are at the moment. And also, owing to intelligence level, level of maturity, and whether or not you've ever um, had your testicles descend enough to be able to bear the responsibilities that amount to those any more than a seven-year-old in the Western world. Because then, then you would not be me. <laughs> Which, of course, you already are not me. But that just reiterates and emphasizes and draws out very, very clear distinctions and boundaries and vast gulfs between the hypothetical you and the hypothetical me. That's right. I am also hypothetical in this situation because if I were not hypothetical, it might hurt my ego. <laughs> so, in a hypothetical sense, I'm nobody. In a hypothetical sense, you can do whatever you want with me. You could make me and hundreds of thousands of people like me do whatever you want in your mind. Like, what do you think they should do with people like us? Put us on an island, underground, force us to have a useful job, pick up a broom and sweep the streets. <laughs> menial things would make me happy. You'd be surprised what menial labors I'm capable of if you want to be the god of me. <laughs> what can I do for you, Mr. God in the sky, that my family hasn't done already? except make up words and verses that, in my own strangely tragic mind, I imagine the god of this world is quite enraged, the lengths to which I go to besmirch his so-called names. Or on the other hand, he is a wise wizard, even more benevolent than anyone has ever made him up to be, and he's pleased with the courage, despite whopping amounts of social anxiety, that it takes to abstain from all types of regular useful employment, to do something that might only seem useful in a thousand years when people regain brain function and not be bitter about it at the same time. I think this is a, a great and much overlooked aspect of my genius yesterday, today, and tomorrow. <laughs> in a way that I can psychically predict that it will be overlooked, it proves not only that I'm psychic, but that I'm overlooked. <laughs> is a test and you passed okay it's just gonna be like this okay you're gonna be like that all right why not be on an angle <laughs> we're all on a slope if you will y equals what is it mx plus b <laughs> why because they want to program us with the idea of S and M. <laughs> A sadomasochistic slope where X-rated things happened plus B. <laughs> You're just being, and then all of a sudden that slope finds you in a masochistic situation. <laughs> Why? Because MX plus B. <laughs> the slope of the situation multiplied by the staggering ignorance which you have brought to the situation and the amount that the bench has positive control over your jurisdiction. <laughs> Children are like, wow, algebra finally makes sense. <laughs> Is that all we have to learn? Yep. If you learn that, you can skip all the other math they want to ram down your throat. <laughs> Find yourself on a slope? Hmm. You better scurry to the side find a flatter place to hide. <laughs> in 1983, that would have been my sister's chest. <laughs> That's a very bad joke. Or it could be this river surface, like the surface of her beautiful spirit.
Do you think I should be proud or wave it around like a flag that perfectly decent people I'm related to think I'm out of my fucking mind? Because I did not retain or perhaps even gain the social ability to interact with them in any kind of normal basis. Yet I'm intelligent enough to make these YouTube videos. There, now you know the naked, stark, utter, bone-rattling truth of my life. And yet, in some sense, they are then and now a bulwark against all the other lovelessness in this world. And my mind rails with these paradoxes, and not because they are such unwieldy paradoxes, but because they are mine and held in the balance of these unwieldy paradoxes might even be my ability to survive in the world. Next, on YouTube. Oh, you hear that? That's the Kingfisher. Lovely. I haven't seen you for a while. This is a really nice place to sit. It's a really nice place to sit. This is a really good spot. <coughs> There's even like a Nike swoosh over here. Like, good job, Landon. My grade one teacher would give me a sticker and put one of each, like a grape-smelling grape sticker and a strawberry-smelling strawberry sticker on each of my nipples. <laughs> good job, Landon. Thank you, Miss Rain. <laughs> Will you marry me? I don't see a lot of fish or crayfish, but uh, the, uh, the kingfisher is quite sonorous. I don't even see where they are right now. They've moved. Oh. <coughs> Another product placement because Guru has been good to me. If you want to send me money, Guru, I will put a Guru in every hoodoo that I do do so well. <coughs> wow. <coughs> I've never watched that before. That's a sign, Guru. See? Kingfisher just did some fishing. That shows that my fishing of Guru will go well. And Guru, if you want to fish in my waters anytime, If you looked in my urine, a lot of it is made up of this substance. <laughs> Thank you for the most pleasant organic sugar, organic tasting diuretic I've ever pers personally used to um, quench my thirst, to wet my whistle, to make my whistle even more whistly, to put a whistle in my whistle. In short, to put a thistle in my thumble stack. <laughs> and at length, to really be there in a way that almost nothing and no one else ever has. Because I'm a lonely bastard. Thank you, Guru, for being my Guru. The people at Guru who all sleep warm in their beds at night, knowing that I am still poor and desperately angry and alone. And yet they get up every day with a positive attitude. They kiss their family, they go to work, and they make sure that I get this. And for that, I could almost kiss them, except I personally believe that kissing is a form of simulated cannibalism, and I don't wish to partake. <laughs> Let's see, what else can I talk about? There's logs here, lots of water. It is a good spot, river level. This is awesome. You got some nice pools. It's definitely a snapshot of the day. Some of the most beautiful country in the area, right here. All you have to do is figure out how to sustain the impulse to 
get up and make it look like you do something useful for society. I feel like I should have a sign saying, I'm sorry. Women. Women. They carry the X chromosome. They carry the letter X. between their legs, their abdomen. It's like the greatest symbol in the world and it basically belongs in the, repro in the reproductive symbol of women, centers of women, and also creative centers. And it also represents the most delicately, I think, but most burdened aspect of the human sanctity and the heaven of our women to be in awesome communication with the earth and each other. You know? And their children. And they feel free with that. That frees them. Like nothing else. Because it's like right there in the nature of the universe for women to feel free communicating and connecting to the earth, each other, and their children across time. Where mankind has let them be leaders in culture. And I would say childcare, except. I think today women need a lot of help from specialists, other women if you prefer. I think women need more support than ever with childbirth and children. And it's no disrespect to say that the world we live in right now has found a way to become harder and harder to do everything. And it is pretty much always gonna show signs of that in the lengths to which all women go to do pretty much anything they do. They hide it well, they take it well. Maybe they've learned to almost make it into nothing, part of life, master it, use it to rule the world. But then we, other, we have this other side to us. That we have the right to be mysterious about what makes us happy because it is mysterious. What excites us, women say? What makes us feel at home in our hearts? Like a giant snake shaped like an S 
connecting to ourselves, our bodies, and the people that fall within the circles of power, trust, and respect, so that our lives glow with the natural coronation of a happy female among her kind. That's her yoga. That's her self-acceptance, even self-worship, self-honoring, self-sanctification, self-purification, self-healing, self-teaching, because women, probably more than any creature, have had to teach themselves how to live. There's not a woman I met, and I've met what I would call, you know, on a qualified basis, predators to me, but I'm, I'm working on it. To try to bring it down to a more manageable level, let's just say I probably play to things in women that I don't really want to get from them. And I'm willing to take my part in that, but I really do, I just have a serious boner for staying, <laughs> staying a loner. <laughs> I have a serious boner for staying alone, and I don't presume to know what that should mean to people or whether I'm crazy or not. It's just a very vulnerable part of my life. I just, I wish women just knew how vulnerable I was. Like I'm, I'm just like them. Like stop trying to fuck me. Like really, I'm a better friend than you'll ever fucking believe. I've been a woman in many incarnations. I think women are great. I think they have the hardest fucking thing to do on this earth and the most ability to change it. Because the greatest of humankind has always been the biggest target of whatever fucking snake-like bitch always wants to make it hard to be alive. And maybe it's just the natural evil of Mother Earth to challenge us. And we must rise to that challenge and we must be responsible for ourselves, ladies. In every way, we must bring and renew the spring of what it means to bring the, the power of creativity and creation and medicine that spans and connects to the greatest traditions of every people on the earth because they have all had a mother. They have all honored the female in you and you and you and me in every possible way. And when you don't do that, it's fucking obvious. When the world doesn't do that, it's obvious to our children. It's obvious to them in our wombs. Respect that, honor that, mourn that. Notice it. Notice what you can't do anything about. Notice what the most hopeless lengths to which we've gone to stave off some fucking unnecessary taxation called God. That patriarchal, misogynistic bastard. forming a good table actually. I think that was my back, that back thing is now my table. That started off as my back thing. I want to say that this entire video about women has been inspired by nature. Because I, as I said the word women, I looked over and I saw everything I told you and some dry sticks and leaves. And in this little Nike swoosh over here, which I think basically is like the symbol of women, which would mean Saturn itself is the symbol of feminine energy. And you see how I think it's, in a sense, it's been misused. I mean, what is Saturn's rings but the biggest hole in the sky? Right? It's the biggest hole there is. The biggest circle of stones. Right? Circles of stones. Think about that. Circles of stones. Around what? Satan, God, Jove in the sky? Am I supposed to think that these giant stones came together and formed the earth? That there was no mother involved? in the formation of our mother. I've known some powerful women in my time. 
but we never got along. I don't think it's because I was a man. I think it's because I'm so much of a woman. Because I really want what they want. I want what women want. I want to be free and happy with who I am. I don't want to have to pay for it, and I don't want anyone to prey on me. I don't want to feel preyed on. The purpose of society to, to be to make sure that I don't ever feel preyed upon and to listen to me when I do, and then everything would be fine. Who am I? I am woman. I am your mother. I have to feed you and love you no matter what, even if I don't want to. I couldn't abort you if I tried. But the way you live, I think people have suggested to you that you should live as though you've already been aborted, as though you don't even have a chance to be free. Claim your voices, your mother tongue. Think about what a mother tongue could truly be. It still is, that aches every way that you ache to be born and to spring forth with freedom and safety for all. Think of that power. Think of that power, honor that power. Honor the tree that is every way your children will ever hug themselves in comfort and safety, in home and hearth, and in the circle of family, the circle of the sun. At the great medicine lodge, where the fire of our anger, our mischance, our torments, the diseases of the world could be laid to rest with but a word and warm the entire end of the medicine lodge. Let's worship that anger. Worship the flames of torment within our families. For we have writhed in this bodily sickness for long enough. You want to claim the power of woman. Well, take it. Feel what that power is like. How would you get to know power that's there for you, in you? In everything that means or could ever mean anything to you, and even though only to you, in a way that would advance the most powerful and sacred language about everything valuable to everybody across all time. A golden language built on your own needs, your own suffering, your own family suffering, your own strength, your endurance, your love, beyond all, your faith, beyond all. Is that not worthy to bend a knee to? To plant a tree in the center of that circle and claim it for thine own. That's your space on the earth. That's the heaven of your children. That is the natural inhabitant of this earth. This is a lamp in the darkness. The lamps are great. When a mind is like the lamp on your cell phone, it's like, oh shit, I forgot my flashlight, but this thing's got one. <laughs> if you've ever been there, and I forgot I had one, and I turned it off, and I asked for the fairies to help me, and they did. They helped me find my flashlight. <laughs> I formed a little spiral in pitch darkness, and I was like, oh, there it is. It happened again when I dropped my belt. I was taking a shit somewhere. I'm just like, fuck, I don't need this. You know, I'm fucked. You know? And again, I took a breath. There's cars going by. And just, it, was a, it, was a, it was a difficult situation. <laughs> Sorry. The river was really high, so I was kind of blocked in, and I really had to go. I did find a good place. It was like, oh, totally kosher, you know? As much as shitting in public can be clear. <laughs> but uh, but uh, I closed my eyes and said, you know, oh, okay, I'm going to calm myself again. Calm. Yeah. Sure enough, boop, 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 walked over there. There's my belt. I reached right down in the darkness, and there it was looped like a figure eight, like the infinity symbol. Like, I mean, this is like difficult, deep, impassable woodland areas. Impossible, you would say, to accomplish any of the feats I accomplished that morning. <laughs> I just, uh, I, and I hate losing things. I have a pet peeve about losing things because 
I can't afford to lose anything. Anyway, this is nice. I told my home I'd be home by three, and it looks like I will. And I'm gonna get up after I finish this joint, and we're gonna go. I think this, ooh, that shiver was from the cold, but I'm just releasing negative energy. I felt really comfortable. said my name. La la la. La 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 la. And the raven said my name. La la la. La 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 la. La la la. La 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 la. Okay, I want to get too animated. It's in a good spot though. Look at that. Just take it all in. I should actually let you take it all in. I'm a really bad photographer. It's just that there's so much. I need to hire a cinematographer. You know, whoever that survivor man hires, like he says he does it himself, but I swear to fucking Lucifer and Christ that Les Stroud has at least a cameraman with him. Like he fucking carries whatever, a hundred pounds of camera equipment into the fucking Rocky Mountains. And he like does things twice and over again so he can, while he's freezing and fucking starving, and thirsty and cold and wet, that this guy would do this by himself. I think that's a creative conceit, but I mean, I can believe it. I think he's an honest dude. So it's not that he's not honest, it's like I'm missing something here. Cause like, I don't, I don't mind. I wouldn't mind. Like, a guy's doing it 99% by himself, and he hires someone to kind of trip along to make sure, like, he doesn't kill himself and to make sure he's got enough footage. Because imagine if you're out there and you fuck up your footage. It's nice to give the responsibility of footage because you have the respons responsibility of staying alive. How that other guy... <laughs> In which case, I'd want to see the other guy. What does he look like? You know? One day the story comes up, how he had like a Sherpa, a Sherpa that was just like freezing to death while he's comfortable in a snow shelter. It's snow shelter. I gotta go.